वेलकम वेलकम टू मेरिट शाइंस मॉक एनालिसिस लेक्चर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू एनालाइज वी आर गोइंग टू टेक ऑन द मॉक ऑफ ऑलिव बोर्ड्स मॉक वन ऑफ मेंस एंड एनालाइज इट थॉरली टुडे टारगेट इज टू एनालाइज द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज सेक्शन वी आर गोइंग टू डू दिस एनालिसिस इन यू नो वन इन ईच लेक्चर वुड बी ऑन वन सेक्शन so today we are going to look at english language section and the other lectures would be about quant and logical reasoning so what is the agenda of today apart from you know analyzing the english language section first of all apart from analyzing the english language section we will also uh, direct you in such a way so that you can do effective analysis for the rest of the mocks yourself so this analysis would create a tempo and a process through which you will be able to do mock analysis of the rest of the mocks and ultimately that same analysis is going to help you in the actual mains third what to do and how to do in the next 15 days because you know uh, the dates have start coming in for the mains so there is another 14 15 days that you are left with for the uh, you know mains uh, 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 mains actual exam so what are the things that you can do in these uh, next 15 days now why are we doing it there is only one reason why you will be doing it right so that you can blast your way through the mains exams okay right so uh, let's let's move on let's uh, nail the mains by uh, and especially the english language section of mains today by looking at how could we have scored something extraordinary in this particular paper right okay first where do we stand what do we mean by where do we stand okay so you know where do we stand is something where we are currently uh, after one or two mocks that we have given so uh, you know at least uh, two to three mocks if not five mocks I'm, i'm sure that you have given at least two to three mocks so where are you at this point right now please understand why we i insist in uh, you know knowing this where we stand now because see uh, after application of the concepts that we discuss here today whether you whether you have sincerely used them or implemented them would be clear from the score enhancement you get before today's uh, you know uh, between these two scores before today's class score and after today's class score so whatever you score after implementing the concepts that we have discussed in the way we have discussed the score enhancement this positive score difference that you go uh, get and the and the amount of it that you get is something that would determine how sincerely you have applied these concepts but before that you should know that what is your before score that is where do we stand today so how do we how do we know that simple now this is the uh, you know staircase just like prelims we will build a staircase for the mains two so in this particular paper in ob's mock 1 there was uh, the score uh, the total marks was 40 now out of 40 if you have scored less than 10 that's a red category that's a pure red category that's something that you shouldn't be second step 10 to 19 which is you know possibly okay but not very uh, not good at all 20 to 25 is that average score that everyone should have got in this mock without even trying much and we'll show that we will we'll, you know we, i i'll show you that you will see for yourself whether you would have been able to uh, do 20 to 24 here next 25 to 30 is a good score in this and more than 30 is a very good score in this so as i as i keep on telling anyone who is uh, getting consistently this score who is getting consistently for the last 3 4 mocks this score don't listen to anyone not even to me right uh, just just do whatever you are doing it's working for you no need to change it at this point of time so if you're consistently getting at more than 30 score in all the mains mocks that you are taking 
of the same difficulty level. Now that's very important of the same difficulty level that we are going to discuss today. The difficulty level that we are going to discuss today is uh, more or less the same difficulty level that uh, we have encountered in 2016 and 2017. In some cases it was uh, the difficulty level of this paper was a tad bit higher, little bit higher, not very much, but a little bit higher uh, compared to the uh, last two years paper. So if in this kind of paper, in the same difficulty level paper, you are scoring more than 30 consistently then you don't need to listen to anyone whatever you are doing uh, you know plan it up and do it accordingly and you would uh, crack it by yourself so but what is the problem most, most of the pro uh, us uh, face the problem is that maybe sometimes we get it uh, get this but mostly we have uh, we, st uh, we get stuck in one place like maybe in here 10 to 19 we are just stuck in one place and we are not able to increase our score or we are inconsistent we are all over the place you know we, we are sometimes we get uh, 17 18 sometimes i get 27 sometimes you get more than 30 maybe so it, it, the inconsistency and getting stuck in one place are the two problems that we face or the two situations rather that we face uh, in in when when it comes to uh, mocks and when it comes to exams in general and so what we're going to do here is uh, a methodology that is going to uh, or, or, or that is directed towards uh, breaking this uh, jinx of inconsistency and getting stuck in one place. So what's that methodology? Now the methodology is as usual with, with all of my classes would be divided into steps. The first step just like prelims we will decide on the strategy based uh, you know and, and that strategy will be based on the paper and your own strength and weakness. Right. So the strategy that you decide on while taking the paper should be decided on two things. One is paper itself, the kind of paper that you have got and the strength and weakness that you have. Which topics are good, which topics you are comfortable with. Then next what you do once you have taken the paper. Now this is the stage where you are in. In mock one you have already taken the paper. I right? suppose you all of you are here. Uh, those who have taken the paper because if you haven't taken this paper this is not going to help you much because we are talking we are going to talk about enhancement of score now enhancement of score can only be uh, you know discussed when you have the original score with you right then only you would know how much you could have increased your score by now reattempt question within time limit set by me now that's something that you would do today now the third step here is to understand the solution so i'll ask you see for every question that i'll give you First, we will order the questions. So the first step is to order the questions in an order that we will take it and then we will re-attempt the questions. Now that time limit would be set by me. So you will pause that lecture, pause the lecture for that uh, second, those many seconds and attempt that particular question again. But remember, don't uh, you know go beyond the time limit much. Now, when you have attempted that question, then go through the solution, uh, resume the video and the solution would start. Rescore yourself. You know, I'll tell you how to rescore yourself. But you know, rescore yourself is something like uh, you know, if 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 you're getting them correct in the next attempt, that is in this attempt, then you score marks for that. And last, on the pattern, on this basis, you design a mock analysis process. Now, this is something that we'll do at the end of the class, and that's something that you need to do in every mock uh, for the next 10 days or 15 days. And please understand you take mocks not to practice questions the practicing questions has already happened earlier when you were preparing for the last three months or six months you take mocks so that you are able to uh, you know sort of uh, improve the scores that you get this time uh, uh, in, in the next time's mock so every mock should give you something to build upon you're getting my point so every mock should give you something so that you can build upon that and create a score which is enviable to, in, you know which 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 people envies uh, you for three right. so let's see let's see uh, what would we have got step one let's talk strategy first now strategy means ordering of questions now how do we do that first these low medium high just like prelims will be divided on the basis of speed and accuracy so first speed the speed is the first thing that will take so the time that you take to do those kinds of questions and then on accuracy but before i move on to that 
let me again list the dysfunctional uh, characteristics that often seeps in our uh, you know uh, inside us when we are approaching a uh, you know paper a competitive exam paper and th those are you can't leave questions now that's a dysfunctional characteristic you'll have to get out of it by yourself i suppose now that you have cleared your prelims this should not happen but if it is happening in mains papers in mains marks please uh, you know make yourself do it right this is a physical problem you'll have to deal with it no one can help you deal with as a matter of fact all dysfunctional problems that we'll be talking about the characteristics that all uh, um, sometimes see inside uh, seep in uh, while we are taking a competitive exam paper like this is something that you can physically overcome and only you can do it right so let's see the second one you should not get emotionally involved with question because if you get that that's a dysfunctional characteristic so even if you have done that question n number of times in your in your home and you are not getting that question at that point in your exam which happens you see that happens a lot right don't get emotionally involved don't start thinking that oh my god i have done this question why am i not able to do this question here i am gone so no 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 such negative thoughts have to be have to be controlled by you at any cost when you are sitting in the exam so if you are not able to do a question which you have already done earlier so what do you think you think only one thing that okay this is not this uh, you know today it's not striking me so let's move on to the next question so the next question is something that we'll move on to bus that's it so let's see uh, so that was second one uh, the third dysfunctional uh, thing that that uh, you know uh, people mess up with uh, you know or, or people get into is you become a friend to the question you love you start loving the question right such a beautiful question you get you know uh, intellectually uh, excited you get intellectually excited inside the paper it's very important to be intellectual inside the paper but to get intellectually excited with a question is something of a dysfunctional characteristic you'll have to avoid it uh, to in totality you'll have to avoid it you see you can get excited about the whole paper you should be intellectually excited about the whole paper the total number of questions you are doing the the, the speed at which you are doing the uh, ability of understanding questions and leaving them if you're not able to do that should get you excited rather than solving a particular question back because that was difficult right so this happens a lot because we we we, we love difficult situations more than easier situations we give them more value even they have the same marks associated we tend to uh, you know be, be, be more uh, prone to spend more time with the difficult questions thereby mismanaging our time the next is thinking what to do again and again in paper is a very bad thing shouldn't do it in you know at all so think it once and then move forward don't go back to the designing uh, drawing board you know don't go back to the drawing board uh, that, that's an idiom going back to the drawing board means again and again uh, reworking your strategy so you don't rework your strategy inside the game again and again that's that, that doesn't work right so again and again if you think what to do in a paper rather than attempting question you are wasting us wasting serious time the fifth one is doing the questions in the order given without taking into consideration your own strengths now that's that's the that's the death knell or that's the last but not the least uh, important dysfunctional characteristic because a lot of people get into this trap because they think that the time is limited and uh, hence we should uh, do as much as we can so they think that uh, going through the paper once and making an idea making a priority of which question to do first and which question to do next is a bad idea not doing is a bad idea setting a priority is a very very good idea especially in the language of english in the language of english setting a priority is a very good idea that's something that you should do because that would entirely change your landscape that you entirely change your score sheet however we'll see it we'll see it uh, on action in action today now these these functional characteristics does not only uh, you know uh, make you lose marks in english language no 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 they make you lose marks everywhere 
they make you lose marks in quantitative aptitude they make you lose marks in lr di everywhere and english so what if you if you work on these characteristics of yours and you you stop doing this then you will have an advantage coming in from all sides now now where were we yes we were on speed and accuracy low medium and high so what is this low medium and high so you see there you you are to you are to divide your abilities of answering questions on the basis of speed and accuracy for example a question that is high speed and high accuracy for example you, so there is one type of question which you have uh, you, you have a very high speed you take very less time to do it and your accuracy is also very high so in this kind of questions in this kind of questions you are uh, you know that should be the first priority question because you will do a lot of questions and get a lot of marks right so let's look at the paper from the perspective of the kind of questions that we got error spotting and correction question we got five question question number 123 to 127 i am assuming that all of you have gone through this paper so you did need did not uh, you know we uh, i need not uh, show you the paper first to uh, explain why these are error spotting question and why they are idiom questions that you have already gone through right now idiom and vocabulary question there were two questions 129 130 critical reasoning application question now 121 122 were critical reasoning application question 128 was a critical reasoning application question and 133 was critical reasoning application question as we move forward you would see what kind of questions i have kept in critical reasoning application pg and pc that is para jumble and para completion question 131 132 137 138 138 four questions grammar application five question 134 to 136 139 140 so error spotting error correction direct grammar question five and five application questions so 10 questions on grammar fib close test three questions 141 to 143 synonym antonym again vocab question 2 144 145 and rc 10 question 146 to 155 now making a skeleton of the paper like this how much time should it take not more than 5 minutes not more than 5 minutes now this 5 minutes may seem very much but this is an investment and not a cost my dear friends just like prelim i in prelim i showed you in prelim you had much lesser time there also we uh, classified the questions and understood which one to do first and which one to do later and this is mains this is mains we have more time we have 40 minutes and in that 40 minutes giving 5 minutes to decide on the order is something which should be done now as a matter of fact you shouldn't take 5 minutes the whole activity should not take you more than 3 minutes how you see you look at a question you look at the instruction and then you move uh, to the next question and you see that the instruction is repeated then you not read the instruction again so you know what type of question it is so it, let's say 121 121 cr so you say 121 122 cr So, and then you have uh, the next you get uh, error spotting 123 so in there you see that a uh, set of five questions have already been written so when you read the first question you know that these are error spotting error correction so you see error spotting and error correction together they were so 123 to 127 so these two things would take hardly 30 seconds you are move you move on to 128 question and so on and so forth so this is the way you do it right so 3 minutes is maximum you should take it now i will prioritize the questions not on the basis of how difficult were these questions no 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 i have not read the questions i have just read the instructions i have just identified the question how difficult these questions are i have no idea at all so how would i prioritize i will prioritize on the basis of my strength and weakness right so this priority that i am giving you is clearly on my strength and weakness if the same strength and weakness you also have you can take this strategy for this kind of mock remember for every exam the strategy needs to be changed and that change is determined in the first 5 minutes clear right so that you can change and if if you if you are uh, not uh, uh, if if that's different uh, if your strengths and weaknesses are different 
you can change for this mock only so now as of now we will move on with the strategy in which i will tell you why am i choosing which one first of all i have a pretty decent vocabulary and uh, you know uh, and, and grammar I, i i think are are direct questions these these direct questions because they are direct questions error spotting error correction either i'll be able to do it or i'll not be able to do it so the speed is very high here right accuracy once i do it i will know it so if i if i'm i'm confused i'll leave it right so vocab would take much less time and this will take much less time so my first priority attempt order my first priority first category first priority should be this see question number 123 to 127 and vocab question 129 30 141 to 145 acha i have taken the fib close test as an application extension of fib close uh, you know uh, vocab you know i uh, i always tell you that fib and close test questions are nothing but extension to the vocabulary questions okay so and that's my first category so in the first priority all the high speed ones we will take next second category reading comprehension now um, remember this whatever is the difficulty level of reading comprehension there are 10 question we cannot leave it so we will not keep it for the end we will not keep it for the end because we will not keep it for the first and we will not keep it for i i generally don't uh, find it comfortable to do it at the first because uh, you see you know uh, i i need to uh, make myself comfortable uh, reading a little and then i move on to rc because then i am at the uh, maximum reading efficiency when i am at the maximum reading efficiency i am able to uh, do the rcs in a much better way that's the logic why i have taken Uh, are seen in the second category and not in the first category in the last category a strict no because in the last category you will not be able to use your you will panic and end end up not doing one rc altogether uh, you know you leave one rc altogether so that's something that i don't want right so uh, my logic for using uh, taking it as the second category because in the first category i would be doing a lot of reading exercises i'll be reading a lot of questions vocabulary and 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 uh, uh, fill in the blanks so when i am moving to the next category rc i'll be much convenient it would be much more convenient to me because i will be comfortable reading a lot right and rc needs a reading a lot also 146 to 155 10 questions second category now then we will move on to the third category which is the grammar application question and the para jumble para completion question the reason very simple i i feel grammar application see please understand error correction and error spotting questions were direct question and hence i took them in the first category now grammar application where i would need to join sentences synthesis synthesize sentences now these would take more time so therefore i would not categorize them in the same category as error spotting and error correction so therefore this would come in my third category and para jumble para completion in the in this category too so those questions in that category cr application is the is the category which i'll keep at the end why because cr application in this paper where questions like main idea question central idea question now these questions require a lot of understanding and then you know applying it to do it so this is going to take a little more time than the other questions so it's always better to do those questions that we can with the, in a in a shorter time with a higher accuracy rather than to delve on questions which would take a lot of more time right so that's the idea that's the concept that's the uh, reason why we put it in this order now i we will retake the paper this was step 1 remember this was step 1 now what was step 2 reattempt the question so we'll retake the paper now we will retake the paper in the same order i'm sure that some of you might have done in this order but most of you will not would not have done in the order that i have given so let us see the by the logic that i used for attempting this paper in this order let's see how we can retake the paper in the time limit step 3 would be understanding the solution it would go on together i'll give you a question we'll pause the video for that much time that is being displayed on the on the uh, screen for that question and then you will resume and understand the solution step 4 and the most important step is to rescore yourself i told you no i'll say what is you score rescore rescoring is you at the end of all the all the uh, you know what do you say uh, questions discussion there would be a new score so that new score would be what your old score plus the correct ones your old score plus the correct ones that you did in the reattempt 
in the reatum the correct ones and when i explained you the solution you realize that these were the careless mistakes that you did while you were reattempting one they also come into uh, your your scores so your new score is old score plus correct plus careless mistake okay so in the reattempt you answered it wrongly but you have uh, made it wrong because of a careless mistake because you have not read the question carefully then also you will add it to the new score add it to the new score what to do about it i'll come to it later on okay right so let me come on the screen let's start ready ready to start so for each question i'll give you the question i'll give you the time you will uh, look at the time and uh, you know uh, uh, pause the lecture for that much time and uh, move on with the solution resume the lecture and move on with the solution okay let's start the first question on your screen now question number 123 the order is the order that we discussed pause the video for 40 seconds done very good now let's see the answer to this question so this is a error spotting and error correction question you will have to identify the error and see whether it can be corrected with these sentences na so let's see if you look at uh, the the, the uh, you know the first one uh, here await is wrong await is wrong right india's await wrong so what what is it replacing it india's wait to join the elite cup of countries undertaking in neutral research this seems to be correct so one needs to be replaced is something that i you can read the sentence once there is a lot of time 40 seconds you read in to read the sentence once you will take 10 15 seconds because you have already read the sentence i am not reading it again i am just moving on to the uh, errors suffered a procedural delaying procedural is adjective i need a noun here delaying is not a noun delay is the noun so this is definitely wrong so suffered a procedural delay this seems to be fine suspended the environmental clearance granted to the indian based neutral so third one seems to be of, of uh, seems to be correct so both one and two needs to be you know uh, changed and and because one and two has been given in there right so b is the answer here clear how much time would you have taken so i'll actually when you had done it for the first time the low speed guys now that we will divide ourselves into three speed guys low speed guys medium speed guys high speed guys the low speed guys should have taken 50 seconds medium 40 seconds high speed guys 30 seconds on an average after so much of practice and after clearing prelims you all have clear prelims so after clearing prelims you should not take more than 40 seconds for these questions and that's why i gave you this time to pause okay chalo next one 40 seconds again now done it let's see this was a simple one there was no error in this question there was no correction required everything was perfect acha if you don't understand this you know uh, you can read the uh, given ones and if you see that there are problem in this you would be able to identify that there were no errors in this okay right so again 50 seconds 40 seconds 30 seconds so uh, and and this is the cumulative time we will go on adding each questions time to this now the third question a first to ensure payment to introduce sing greater trans this is a verb here we are looking at a verb so how can we do introducing be a verb here we need two plus one, verb one form that is to introduced greater trans so is it there yes it is there so one might be an option to greater transparency in the acquisition process and to integrate rehabilitating and resettlement integrate what rehabilitating is not a noun because you see this has to be a noun how do we know because this is resettlement which is a noun here also be has to be noun you see remember my uh, uh, grammar lectures we are we are using the same things we are just looking at the different different parts of speech that's what we did in my grammar lecture remember that we we looked at the different different parts of speech and we saw that whether the position is correct or not whether uh, the, the 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 word has been used correctly or not this is a sure shot case of Uh, noun position uh, error uh, error 
in noun we did errors of noun we did no position error that's what is happening so you need a noun here so rehabilitation is something which makes it correct and then you have uh, the and resettlement culminated in the enactment of the 2009 this is perfectly fine the third one is perfectly fine so resettlement culminated of the of you do not say that this is wrong that was fine so both one and two b clear right chalo next move on let's move on to question number 126 so again 50 40 30 so uh, we, we are we are at third question see till now the questions that we did they were easy right three out of three you should have got now let's move on to the next one question number 126 if you had not got to three out of three that means that you are making some silly mistakes 40 seconds pause it done it chalo let's see uh you see in these kinds of questions if you are not very sure about these uh, the options whether they are correct or not you can read the changed ones and then it would have it would be clear okay right so let's see in the 126th one in the first one revising of antibiotics class classes now the revising of antibiotics classes does not ma make sense it should be replaced with revision right so revision is the is the job that needs to be done is it there the revise of now that also doesn't make sense so i am looking at a case where one itself is not correct and the replacement is also not correct here only i can go forward and mark e but i'll move forward and and, and uh, see uh two is a welcome step in the globally initiative are globally is an adverb i need an adjective here again a position error na initiative is a noun i need an adjective here so global adjective is something that uh, uh, type of adjective is what i am going to say see let's see whether it is there in the chain no is not there in the chain now i am very clear that if one at least one or two uh, you know if if not one two is definitely wrong that was very simple if you could not identify this you should have identified this and the changed one is also not correct so the only answer that can be is none of the options provide the correct replacement e simple simple please understand this is class 6 7 stuff this question was not more difficult than a class 7 stuff globally initiative doesn't make sense even in your class 7th you knew, knew that it should have been global initiative right okay okay chalo so these were easy questions last question of error spotting 40 seconds okay let's see the precise cause of the fire will only become known in the days and weeks to come look at all the uh, you know what do you say the parts of speech precise cause adjective noun perfectly fine preposition fine again noun so cause is the subject will only become known in the the, the ver uh, verb is also correct in the days and weeks to come everything perfect in the first part as fire fighters contend fire fighters plural so contend plural verb see i'm i'm going by the checklist of of my uh, mother rule lecture remember the 13th lecture of of our uh, uh, grammar playlist mother rule lecture that's what i'm doing fire fighters plural plural verb with the grim aftermath but the anger palpable in the local community and beyond makes acha makes makes is referring to cause so it's perfectly fine the need to ask difficult question more pressing than ever everything fine you don't need to change it but let's say you could not understand it so read these sentences and you would be clear precise cause of the uh, fire will only be came known wrong become known became known wrong as fire fighters contended no 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 you know will is given so if will is given that means future tense so the uh, the, the the event in reference has to be in present tense so this is also eliminated and beyond makes the need to ask a difficult question as ever as does not fit as than ever is the right you say so you see when you look at 1 2 3 you know that the, all the three replacements are wrong and hence you know no correction clear so question number 127 over five questions over you know out of these five questions they were easy questions you could have scored five out of four five uh, out of five but at least four out of five is something that you should have scored 
four out of five is something that you should have scored here. You know, as a, as a mediocre guy, you should have. And as a medium speed, medium accuracy guy, you should have scored here. Now, if if you are a low speed guy, then you should would have taken four minute ten seconds. If you are a medium speed guy, three minute ten twenty seconds, and high speed guy, two minute thirty second. Only two minute thirty second, or you know, around three minute over, and you are already done with four questions. You have scored four marks. Achha, I am I am adding that three to four uh, five minutes that you have taken to I am I am I am subtracting it for the from the total time. So total time is forty minutes. I am assuming that five minutes you have taken to uh, make this strategy. So you are left with only thirty five minutes now. So if I I go beyond and you all of us know last two minutes we can't do anything. So if if we go beyond thirty two minutes, uh, then then that means that my paper is over. That's what we will assume. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Now, let's move. Question number one twenty-eight. No, not one twenty-eight. The next question was one twenty-nine because one twenty-eight was a critical reasoning question, Anna. Right? So one twenty-nine vocab question, uh, idiom, idiom application question. Very simple. What is down the wire? Ah, uh, just keep your uh, take your time. I'm sorry. Take your time. Done. Chalo. down the wire means you know last uh, to the last minute it means to the last minute and that's what the sentence is saying so first one is correct ins and outs means details is that what is the b saying no is saying at the lowest levels right so this is incorrect rude awakening rude awakening is discover something unpleasant truth you know unpleasant truth or inconvenient truth is that is that relevant to the sentence in here no so this is also eliminated so only one and b is correct so only one is correct so your answer should be a here okay how much time see i i i personally feel you shouldn't have taken more than 30 seconds but you know 40 seconds 45 seconds if even if you had taken you have enough time for that next question question number 130 same take 40 seconds time done now if we look at here uh, you know going downhill what does that mean going downhill means to 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 deteriorate now that's that's what is happening here it is deteriorating dragging its feet dragging its feet means not willing to do so meaningly is it doing prevaricating dragging its feet added insult to injury rub salt to injury all same thing meaning that they are uh, you know it's it's it's, it's uh, causing more pain in a in a pain condition right so he not only abused his manager but also demanded a uh, severance pay so both together added insult insult to injury so all of the three are correct so d is the answer again you should have taken 40 seconds at the max so over two idiom over now we will move on to the next set but if you know two idioms over now these two idiom questions you should have got them correct no no you know excuses at this stage if you had got them wrong then you know you should be uh, uh, reading day in and day out for the next 10 days you should take mocks you should practice questions apart from that you should read a lot because these are very, very common idioms so 6 out of 7 is where you stand now already you are at 6 out of 7 let's see if you are a, if you are a medium speed guy or a low speed guy with a medium accuracy that's what we are saying now we will look at the yes close test now the close test once 141 the question number 141 that was the next one in our agenda <clears throat> let's see you see here uh acha 30 seconds take 30 seconds okay now see done have you have you reattempted it let's see wild demonstration continuous stress violent clashes all negative blank the problem so there has to be a verb here verb here and that has to be also negative because it has you know worsened the problems kind of of an already blank economy so there has to be an adjective here hai na right okay now and created more tension so th this is clear from the uh, uh, you know close test analysis now here negative words verb exacerbated aggravated right paralyzed is a negative word but it does not fit uh, into the context implicated does not fit into the context these are not verbs so exacerbated aggravated 
one right and uh, then then you have uh, uh, which is the next one uh, and and one one here two and six two here this two will be eliminated on the basis of the analysis of the first blank option number d and option number e will be eliminated i am left with the first three option now the second blank often already often already blank economy adjective negative in connotation so fragile struggling and uh, paralyzed all these three would be good adjectives to fit in right so let's see the first one one and three so which is uh, you know exacerbated the problem exacerbated means worsened exacerbated the problems of an already fragile economy fits it fits four struggling the problems Achha, how do we uh, keep it one here three in the second then four in the first five in the second where there are two things right this was not clear from the instruction the, you know I was, I was not happy with the instruction that were given because the instructions were ambiguous but what you needed to do here was that put one in first blank three in the second blank fits very good put four in first blank five in the second blank fits then this is the answer if not then this is not the answer put two in first blank six in the second blank right so when there is when there are two jobs to do two replacements to do right in this kind of cases there would be a there would be a shorthand and that would be joining it but they should have made this clear in the instruction which they had not so there you would have to you know use your uh, a little bit of common sense to figure it out bus so fourth one struggling the problems eliminated struggling the problems cannot come in the place of in the place of first blank so it is eliminated now two and six aggravated the problems often already implicated doesn't make sense so a b eliminated only c can be the answer because d and e has been eliminated earlier only so you can mark at this stage answer and move forward but still if you need to convince yourself you don't need to but if you need to convince yourself you can check only exacerbated the problems of an already fragile economy perfect this was already there here also now let's see two and five aggravated the problems of an already paralyzed economy perfectly fine both both are fitting both are fitting hence three is the answer c is the answer how much time you should have taken right 30 seconds 40 seconds 50 seconds right so that was the question number 141 let's see question number 142 30 seconds pause the video done now see here the first place will be filled by an adjective by this is a noun this has to be an adjective and here there has to be a verb because nothing can fill away in, in there Chalo, you could not understand that then you put in options then you put in options one and four against invincible damage or even evacuate now invincible damage does not fit in invincible damage it doesn't make any sense Anna, how can damage be invincible invincible is that which cannot be destroyed right so eliminated two and five Im importune a uh, damage or even enunciate doesn't make sense doesn't make sense at all right the words does not fit in three and six inevitable damage maybe yes or even evade evade does not make sense in the second place because what are we evading right we can evacuate but why evading so the next one is the same thing in uh, in you know uh, inevitable damage so damage would happen you cannot stop it and evacuate so that's the right one d1 right again 30 40 50 for high medium and low 143 the uh, third uh, fill in the blanks question and the last fill in the blanks question very you know they were, were they, uh, in the from by the standards of fill in the blanks question they were not very difficult question they were pretty manageable questions as such if you look at it in here if you see here you know uh, the noun that would come is, is is going to help us to identify a lot of things let's see let's go by uh, options one and four linked cannot come 
linked cannot come in the place of first so this is eliminated if this is eliminated this is also eliminated so you are left with b c and d now uh, let's see uh, b connection yes connection can be let's see four have fled in steady waves yes that can also be there so b is a good candidate association yes it can be let's see five have indebted in steady waves this does not make sense contextually so c is eliminated four fled to balkan province this also doesn't make sense this is also eliminated so by elimination only you can arrive to the answer that it would be b right now so this time you should have taken now the close test questions are over before the close test question you are at uh, how much six out of seven now two out of the three could have been correct now in close test so you should have been in 8 out of 10 but this is something that you should have got if you are not getting this that means either it means either you are doing careless mistake right after retake after retake you are not getting this then careless mistake or there is some serious conceptual loopholes in your uh, studies so you know revise these particular topics a little then let's move on to the next question next question uh, question number 30 uh, sorry, question number 144, 30 seconds. Take it. Now, let's come. An easy question, you must have done it by yourself, right? Go by option. You know, morose means someone who is, is, is very sad looking, right? The achha, You need to find out synonym or antonym, okay? So, there is only one pair, that is morose and sullen, and that is AD. So, even if you couldn't identify it, you could have gone through the option. Morose Auburn does not fit. Auburn's it does not fit. Uh, squalid sullen does not fit moros auburn fits correct right so d is the answer next 30 seconds again now let's see see what is furtive furtive means creative something when you are uh, you know avoiding uh, or, or when you are trying to avoid uh, someone seeing something right so secretive so uh, is, is there any uh, thing in here if you look at it, there is nothing. Furtive is secretive. Inimical is enemy, uh, like an enemy. Astound is to sur being surprised and ingenuous is someone who is uh, creative. So nothing fits in as synonym or antonym. So none of these, right? So this was the, these were the two questions of vocab. Before this, you were at eight out of ten. Now at least one out of it would, should have been correct. This much vocab you should know. You know, so 9 out of 12. So you are now at 9 out of 12. Out of the 12 questions you have uh, attempted, you are at 9. So imagine a condition you are already done with 12 questions. You have taken, if you are the high speed guy, you have taken only 6 minutes. You have scored 9 marks. If you are the medium guy, you have taken 7 and, uh, to 8 minutes. You have sco uh, scored 9 marks. And you are the, the, even the low speed guys, you have uh, scored, you know, uh, uh, 9 to 10 minutes and uh, you scored 9 marks. If you are the high speed, high accuracy guy, you would have scored more than 9. Hai na? You would have scored more than 9. So, you know, see, this is the kind of thing that strategy does for you. I'm sure a lot of you might have got as much score in, the, in this mock. And I was going through your scores and I saw, I mean, I'm mean going through your scores, means I'm going through the taker scores, the scores of the takers, and I saw that there were so many 6, 7, 8. And you see in the first 6 minutes of the English language section, you could have got 9. Isn't this amazing? That's what strategy can do to you. Got it? Right. So, let's move further. further. Now, RC. So, before, before we move on to the RC, let me come to, on the screen. So, you are seeing how strategy is giving us advantage after advantage. In prelim also, you saw that. In, in, in mains also, that's what our purpose is. To see that to make, the, to attempt the paper in such a way so that our efficiency in the paper is, is such that even if we take, we are given 20 minutes, we are way beyond the uh, competitor score. Right? Okay. So, that, that should be our target. And we are getting 40 minutes. That's a lot of time. So, the, you know, that, with that target in our mind, with that idea in our mind, we are moving forward and that's the utility of strategy giving a score in the first 10 minutes that score which normally people are getting at the end of the test that we are getting in the first 6 to 10 minutes 
that's the amazing part of it now in the rcs in the rcs the next priority was yes rcs this was the first priority question we are just done with the first priority question in the rcs you will remember that we had uh, earlier also i i am always of the opinion in rcs we should read the roots of the question first so that's what we'll do here also i will give you some time to read the roots of the questions okay so this activity would take you know some time one minute or so and then we will see what kind of questions are they so whether they are fact based reference based questions whether they are inference based with reference based questions you know reference based questions all of you know what they are i have already explained in the prelim analysis so what is it when in a question the question refers back to a particular specific part of the paragraph there i know that i'll need to go back to that part of the paragraph to answer this question so that uh, that question has a reference base hai na whereas those question which for which my overall understanding of the paragraph or those question where i'll have to go through the whole paragraph or a substantial part of the paragraph to answer the question they are without reference base questions right fact based question is where the questions answer is there and uh, you know inference based question is where the questions answer is to be inferred by you concluded by you critical reasoning type of question okay so i'll give you the questions first and then i will give you the passage to be read i'll give you the time limit in which you need to do it and then we will move on to one question so i'll i'll give the passage one question give the passage one question and then we'll move on to uh, solve them right chalo so read the question one uh, question number 146 to 150 the first passage uh, don't take more than one minute time done now let's see what are the kinds of questions uh, fact based without reference point how do we know which of the following is true according to the passage now i'll have to read the whole passage and identify which are false or true so we need to read a substantial part of the pa uh, passage na right so fact based so i'll get the answer directly from the passage but it's a fact based question but without reference point the second one which of the following sorry which of the following uh, can logically and contextually uh, link para 4 and 5 so it, this is a, with the reference point 4 and 5 uh, has to be linked so there is a reference point but it's an inference based question 148 title inference based without reference point tone inference based with reference point because fifth para has been given fifth para has been given uh, and uh, the last one fact based with, with reference point because it has been given that uh, you know what of which of the following points mentioned in the passage is in favor of the aspect of the matrix of crowdfunding in india so that's the reference that has been given so now i am giving you the passage pause the lecture for uh, you know one minute if you are a high speed reader 1 minute 30 second for medium speed reader 2 minute for low speed reader and identify the important areas done chalo let's move on to the uh, questions now question number 146 that the first question 40 seconds pause the video for 40 seconds and answer chalo very good now see what we'll do here is which of the following is true as per the passage the world bank report observes that crowd funding has emerged as a multi billion uh, multi dollar global multi billion dollar global industry now this is something that we know is here you know right so world bank uh, has has emerged as a multi billion dollar global industry is here okay a few years back india also become second largest here right crowd funding is a big opportunity here so all the three are there hence the answer is e very simple see it would have taken time i have given you 40 seconds you could have taken 1 minute for this you would have taken but after reading it you would have just known that you need to read the paragraph 2 and 3 to convince yourself about the answer because you know that these things were in the paragraph 2 and 3 and rereading that would not have taken more than 20 seconds so you read this part uh, part 5 seconds 20 seconds to reread it identify it and answer it so 40 seconds were more than enough even if you had may taken more time but you shouldn't have got this question wrong next 40 seconds pause the video for 40 seconds done chalo paragraph 4 and 5 so this is paragraph 4 and this is paragraph 5 so how do i bridge between paragraph 4 and 5 paragraph 4 talks about 
uh, you know uh, the, the current status of of uh, the the you know what do you say these uh, fundings this crown funding talking about milap right whereas paragraph 5 is talking about the you know uh, crowd funding is still at a nascent stage so you have to link it's like a para completion question and right? a is like a para completion question the first one let's see the first one there are several platform that exist today uh doesn't make sense it is not taking the idea forward what happens in para completion it is taking the idea forward of the last line and matching it with the next line equity funding uh, crowd funding is an alternative to membership in big uh, equity crowd funding has been discussed here right so it is extending that chalo sebi will out of context according to bain and companies funding again out of context india is the largest out of context so only b can be the answer only b can be the answer see it looks so difficult but it was so easy right these two questions you shouldn't have got them wrong okay if you have read it uh, carefully next question 30 seconds title of the passage okay now let me explain see the the this question has to be answered on the basis of the overall understanding of the passage now what is the app title of the passage this uh, passage is about uh, you know uh, what do you say it's about crowd funding and crowd funding in india that's that's what it is right so let's let's look at the options will crowd funding become a big deal in india maybe because they are talking about whether there are opportunities and how it can become crowd funding by numbers no 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 we are not talking about crowd funding by numbers in general right where are the indian startups too specific indian startups that have embraced no too specific indian startups that are no this too specific so these are all too specific they will not be a part hence only a can be the title you see you know people feel the title questions are very difficult but that that's not so if you, if you if you have gone through the passage and you have understood the crux of the main idea of the passage identifying the title passage in the in a, in a, in a scenario where where the options are so far away is very easy okay right so a is the answer here question number 149 what is the tone of the author in the fifth para so fifth para what is the tone of the author crowd funding is still in a nascent stage in india and uh, you know if if, if you uh, see however its market potential is huge industry is growing exponentially so is is uh, let's see the option appreciative no is not analyze you know appreciating anyone suggestive maybe amusing no not surprised amusing is surprise optimistic ah between suggestive and optimistic he is optimistic comparative would not comes so optimistic d is the answer last question of this paragraph take 40 seconds now let's see here if you see which of the following is again again it's a fact based with reference uh, because here the reference is aspect of matrix in crowd funding in india where are they one is here india has just overtaken the us to become number one all the matrix were in the first two paragraph right okay so if if you look at it the first and second were there slowly a lot of startups are going down the path of crowd funding is something that is not you know uh, is not uh, given in the favor as an aspect of matrix of crowd funding in india it's not given right you will not cannot show me in, in in the paragraph so hence only both 1 and 2 mm. so according to me at least 4 uh, you could have got 4 out of 5 correct here but at least 3 out of 5 is something that you should have got chalo so how much time you would have you should have taken see 5 minutes for the high speed guy because you would have taken 1 minute to read the passage 1 minute to read the question 2 minute and 3 minute to do these questions uh, so 5 minutes uh, if 5 minute 45 for the medium one and 6 minute 30 for the low speed guy so 16 minute 10 seconds 13 minute 25 seconds and 11 minutes we are and we are already done with 17 questions theek okay? hai chalo next question number 151 to 155 the next paragraph pause the video and identify the type of questions and the keywords obviously chal let's see what are the types of question fact based without reference point because false as per the passage i'll have to read the passage or a substantial part inference based without the reference point 
inference based without reference point a lot of without reference point this one inference based with the reference point which is there has been a reference of fourth para that has been given and this one with inference based without reference point again so i'm giving you the passage now pause the video for whatever time you would take to read and read it done it chalo let's what the high speed guy one minute the low speed guy two minutes and the medium speed guy one minute 30 seconds so let's move on to the first question pause the video for 40 seconds done so which of the following a is false as per the passage so if you look at it here the you know uh, here is the identification of 26 7 key uh, contextual challenges now if you look at it if here the identification of 26 7 key challenges self manager it is there so this is this and this is giving talking about different things it is saying that helps hiring managers articulate the biggest test unlikely to be encountered unlikely to be encountered a careless guy would miss it whereas this says articulate the biggest test likely to be encountered so this is wrong this is clearly wrong right so this is this is there but you need to read it and see whether the same thing is said the other ones are there need for more tailored yes there and the same thing is being said there was a mismatch between what the planning process was showing as the right answer and what the decision maker felt was right yes that is what has been said so these two are correct these two are correct but this is false and you have been asked what is false so this is false only two is false hence b is the answer clear right next <laughs> 40 seconds which of the following statements can be inferred from the passage so you have this uh, again which of the following statement can be inferred if you look at it contextual challenges specific uh, to the now in this question i have a doubt in this question i have a doubt let, let, let me let me tell you what i think the answer the given is a the answer given is a okay that is both one and three so i'll i'll, I'll show you what is my doubt which of the following statements can be inferred from the passages contextual challenges specific to the role is important only for hiring senior leadership i think this is wrong because the whole passage is about that contextual challenges specific to the role is important for all type of leadership position not only the senior leadership let me show you but where in hiring for uh, people into lower leadership jobs companies typically don't pay attention to contextual challenges specific to the role they tend to prefer jack of all trades so what can be inferred from the passage that the author thinks that they are that is important right Achha, if there had been said that uh, organization thinks contextual challenges specific to the role is important then it would have been correct but that has not been said it is said that contextual challenges specific to the role is important. That means what we can we infer from the paragraph. Now, inference from the paragraph is nothing but what author is trying to say. But author is not trying to say this. Author is saying that contextual challenges specific to the role is as important for the uh, junior level uh, management role also. Right. So, one according to me is wrong. And hence, my answer is only three. So my, you know, the, this, 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 I suppose was a wrong answer according to the solution. Their answer is A, but I, I would go with only three. So if those guys who have marked only three should, should correct, uh, these answers of this, right. Uh, generic workhorse leader, these were there. These were already there. These were there, uh, less effective. You know that these were there out of the 300 contextual changes, 27 mattered the most. These were there. Now, which of the following can be apt title of the for the passage? Take 30 seconds. Done? Shall See, the new way of, to go about hiring, you know, this is too much. We are not talking about assessment test, we are talking about context. Why the level of hiring today is not at par with out of context, uh, out of scope. Best practices that could be used while hiring specific people, uh, even out of scope. On which fronts? The com companies are lagging today when it comes to hiring. True, uh, you know, it's it's it is there, but it's too general, too general. When hiring executives, context matters. Ah, bingo. It's talking about context. It's talking about context, context, context. Main idea, context. So title has to be there. So E is the title. Question number one fifty four. Take forty seconds. Chalo, let's see. 
which of the following could be the motives in the fourth para now what is the motive the motive is simple the motive is to show, you know it is given in there even in there even the companies and recruiters were initially following the assessment matter when it came to the final step they do not believe the assessment result right that was the motive that was the motive of showing it it is clear in there and this is too general it cannot be uh, you know uh, to showcase that they were not very reliable or recruiters thought that they were not very reliable so you know it was not to showcase that they were not very reliable it was to showcase that recruiters thought they were not very reliable okay uh, which is three the last question question number 155 which of the following uh, 50 seconds pause it for 50 seconds again it's given in there you see in here again uh, in this for this question i don't know whether you noticed it or not uh, they say that the answer is d that is both 2 and 3 but i could not find anything wrong with one oh i think the answer is all of the above why because you could you could get this from from the paragraph Now, let's see this first one not focusing on who will thrive in specific context what are they asking in this question they are asking that whether these context are replicating the context uh, you know of the passage so context of the passage is that if for you should recruit people for uh, keeping context in mind if you don't do it if you do it you will get benefited if you don't do it you will get losses that's what they are saying na so let's see here not focusing on who will thrive in specific context might make a company unaware that it has many executives who are skilled at launching new products or competing for market share but very few who excel at cost cutting a loss a loss if you don't focus who will thrive in specific context you may end up with people who have one type of skill set so while recruiting you have not focused and then you have ended up with a, uh, a kind of a skill set which is very uh, skew you know skew uh, uh, which is very skewed to one one end right so this is also the same context that the paragraph is talking about that you should talk about you should think about context even in for uh, all roles so i think one is also there so all of the above now these are over now 5 minute 20 seconds for the uh, High speed guy, six minute twenty second, six minute five second for the medium speed guy, nineteen minute thirty second, six minute fifty second for the low speed guy, twenty three minute. And after these two passages, you see, this was a more difficult one. The earlier one was an easier one. You could have easily got a seven out of ten, but at least a six out of ten is something that you should have managed. So if you had managed a six out of ten, then out of the twenty two questions, because you were at nine out of twelve. now out of the 22 question now you have gone through you are at 15 so you are already at 15 out of 22 let's say 15 correct out of 22 out of which some question would be more of more than one marks but 15 correct out of 22 right so that's 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 the achievement that you are in let's move on to the next now the priority 3 question remember the priority 3 questions would be para jumble para completion and grammar application this is the priority three questions now let's see priority three question take 50 second and answer now let's see which of the following acha the sentence has been given and saying rearrange the order which of the following is the final order simple uh, you know para jumble and that too the first uh, has been given so you can see here very simply that uh, you know ca is a mandatory pair because c is c a is talking about yet for both authorized unauthorized and it is even tougher for uh, unauthorized performance so you know c a is a mandatory pair now if c a is a mandatory pair and uh, you know uh, if and what would can come after f e f has to come after e because that's the uh, this is the next extension of the idea so f has to come after e f and c a is mandatory pair only this can be the answer but still you can make it and you know take it f b c a d and see whether it fits in or not right again acha there is another thing in this d has to be the conclusive statement d has to be the conclusive statement the streets are a virtual you know it is it is more or less ending the whole argument right so again 
50 seconds, 40 seconds, 17 minute, 20 minute, 24 minute. Okay, now do the question number 132, 30 seconds. Done? Chalo, let's see. See, this is the same question, but what is it asking? If the in the above state of statements, uh, if E is rearranged to be the last statement, which of the following would be the odd sentence? Which of the following would be the odd sentence? So if you look at it, uh, what are we supposed to do? That if E is at the end, what would uh, which sentence will uh, make E useless or which you know which uh, what will make E redundant? If there is any sentence that makes E redundant or superfluous or you know or useless then that sentence has to go that would be an odd one out and if you look at this one sentence makes E useless and that is sentence D sentence D makes E useless because if I put D there would be no use of E then right so it, is, it will not fit in there the whole order has to be now changed if E is the one because now the E is the conclusive statement, the whole thing would come in a different way, right? So, D is the odd one out, hence the answer is B, okay? Again, so you should have taken 40, 50 or 1 minute according to your speed. So, para completion question over. Now, in the para completion question over, now we move on to the 133 question. Achha. 133 question is not a PJ or a para completion question, but of critical reasoning. But we will still do it as it is in line. Because you know, leaving it and then going on, there is only one question in line of critical reasoning, we'll just do it. It'll give more time to it, but we'll do it. Take 50 seconds. Okay, so what has been asked? It has been asked from which the idea can be derived. So, what we are essentially, we, we have to see that, is this the main idea of this or this or this, right? So, if you look at it, if you look at this question, 3 is specific, right? 3 is uh, specific, uh, though it talks about the same thing, it is very specific, it is specific about some country, whereas 1 and 2 are talking about in general and, and they are saying of the same thing and hence A is the answer, both 1 and 2. Though I agree it was a little difficult, uh, you know, some of you might have marked all the 3 which is okay in this case, but you know, why, why not 3 and why only 1 and 2 because it was specific, okay. Shall. So again, one minute or 50 seconds you should have, would have uh, taken for this. Now we'll move on to the another priority two question now. 134. Ah, grammatically, grammatical, uh, a grammar application question. Do it. Done. Shall. Let me show you this. 134. See, here, decreasing the overall number of storms. Uh, a warming climate might also increase the number of internal storms. What is problematic in this? First, read the main sentence. Main sentence says, warming climate may possibly increase storms, but it could also decrease. So, both possibilities, na? both possibilities, none of them sure it is. But if you look at A, it makes decreasing number of storms a surety. Decreasing overall number of storms that form a warming climate. So, a warming climate definitely decreases. That's not the meaning that has been given in the main sentence. So, the meaning is changed, eliminated. Even as a warming climate might decrease the probability, it could increase the number of storms. Probability, correct. B is correct. Sense is same. Although the possibility of warming climate increasing the number of intense storms is there, little can be said. Ah, little can be said. It is, it is, you know, changing the context. It is wrong. Right, so C is again wrong. Okay, so only B, only B. That was grammar application question. Let's move on to the next grammar application question. Question number 135. In the case, achha, take your time, take your time, 40 seconds. Chalo, done. So let's see here, uh, which one would it be? In the case that Marty does not come to the event, you must give the speech. So, what is it saying? That if Marty does not come, then you should give the speech. So, Marty comes, you don't give the speech. You know, it's, it's, it's like Marty does not come, then you give the speech is kind of meaning that you want to mean. You must give the speech if Marty does not come to the event. Yes. Should Marty not come to the event, you must give the speech. Yes. 
you must give the speech lest marty not come to the event mm, this is problematic because lest means you know what lest means lest means with the intention of preventing when you want to prevent that means this sentence says that you should give the speech because if you give the speech marty will not come does the sentence want to say that main sentence no na sentence wants to say that if marty does not come then you give the speech he says that you give the speech then marty will not come that's not what it means hence here also i do not agree with their answer they say it is e 1 2 3 but i say it is definitely 1 and 2 b right so if you have marked 1 and 2 your answer is correct theek hai chalo let's move on to the next question 136 see i am i am cumulative i am adding up the time so now the low speed guy is at 27 minute 50 second almost 28 minute the medium speed guy 24 minute the high speed guy 20 minute and add 5 minute of strategy building to it so he is at 32 minute he is at you know around 29 minute he is at around 25 minute right so they are in these positions let's see next question you will have to see whether it's grammatical correct see it done chalo let's see question number 136 see one is wrong because he is go acha there were doubts uh, some people uh, posted on uh, you know some of you asked on facebook regarding this question so i'll, I'll explain it there why not one plus first see the first one i uh, mean sentence in order to improve relations with his family he shifted to his hometown so what does it mean he wants to improve relation to with his family and therefore he went to his uh, hometown that means when he if he is close you know it, it, what what sense does it give that he is going to work on his relationship uh, by moving his to his hometown but does it in any way say that moving to his hometown will guarantee with guarantee improve his relationship no na it does not say that right so let's look at one he shifted to his hometown as doing so would improve relation this is saying it with surety that if he uh, uh, is going to hometown because when he goes to hometown he will improve relationship no 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 that is not the sense of the main sentence main sentence says that to improve relationship he is going after going it might improve it might not improve that's a different ball game altogether we don't know about it only this much is given this says that if he goes it would improve 100% this is wrong hence one is wrong understood so it's not a surety original sentence does not mean that just by going there all would be right no whereas one means that hence it is eliminated hence your answer is both 2 and 3 theek hai 2 and 3 are perfectly fine he says his purpose of shifting was to improve relationship he wanted to improve relationship so he shifted so he wanted to improve hai na so you have to work on that right so 2 and 3 are correct and 30 40 40 this was easy chalo the the, the last two priority three question these are the last two priority three question para completion these are the last two priority three question right now let's see अच्छा टेक योर टाइम डन सिंपल दिस इज ए बिकॉज सी दिस हैज टू बी यू नो दिस हैज टू बी अनलाइक मास इंस्टीट्यूशन कॉस्ड बाय इवेंट्स लाइक एस्टोरॉइड वॉल्कैनिक नेचुरल शेप्स द करंट क्राइसिस इज ऑलमोस्ट एंटायरली कॉस्ड अस बाय ह्यूमंस ओके एंड 99% ऑफ करंटली थ्रेटेड स्पीशीज आर बाय ह्यूमंस सो अनलाइक this is the unlike is joining these two sentences now what is unlike this is natural this is human made but see b earth could see another mass in this and unlike to uh, cannot join these two sentences unlike will not be able to join these two sentences because there is no nothing unlike between these two sentences and hence b cannot be there hence you will have only one a and c which is the first one right the last question of priority 3 para completion Uh, and the last question of para completion to take your time done chalo see this is a very easy para completion question only one line and 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 then another line to be filled up 
See in this question, if you see, you are uh, you definite that this is talking about negative and the extension has to be in the negative form, right? So if you see at B and C, they are both positive. People feel quite positive. People overall are positive. So these two are eliminated. Tone is changing. Where, uh, now it is where economic, this is neutral. We don't know whether it is positive or negative, but it can go on at least. This cannot go on with this tone, right? Hence only A. Done? So, how much time you should have taken this? See, 30 minutes, 30 seconds, 26 minutes, 21 minutes, 30 seconds. This is where you are. Right? Okay? Now, the next question. Oh, there are some more questions of uh, priority 3. Priority 3 is not over. There are two questions of priority 3. I, you know, I was, I was mistaken. Priority 3 would be over at 140. Okay? So, there are two questions. Now, these two questions are about Yes, they are about, you know, four sentences to be connectors, sentence connectors. These two are about grammar application, hai na? right? So, take your 50 seconds. Done. So, let's see. You see here, reading strains his eyes and makes them hurt. So, you know, you can go through the options here. If you go through the options, you would see, uh, you know, makes them hurt. Uh, and and uh, let's see, BC. He loves to climb the bedpost. Uh, because he does not understand the words uh, can make it new interesting. Well. So, BC can be BD because he does not know yet what a wonderful thing language is because reading senses. So, all these three BC, BD, BA can be AD cannot be reading senses eyes and makes them hurt because uh, you know he does not understand. No, this AD can be AD can be but not um, let's see AC. AC uh, reading uh, strains his eyes and makes them hurt he, because he does not understand is okay because he does not yet so AD he reading because the, you see AD and AC also does not fit why because though they are talking about words because he, but here you see the, it's a physical problem it's a physical problem now when it's a physical problem it cannot be because of a, of a, a technique, you know, of, of a technical issue with reading, right? So, it's a physical problem, it has to be related. So, AD and AC can also not be. Uh, this is also eliminated, this is also eliminated. AB, AB can never be because it's, it's, it's irrelevant. So, this is also eliminated and hence only B can be the answer. The last question now, one last question of the priority 3. 140. Why? Take your time. The answer here is C. The answer here is C. That is A, B, A, C, C, D. Right. If, if you see A, D, small towns like while, you see the connector while is when. You know, chronologically it has to fit uh, and, and it has to be a little contrasting. It has to be a little contrasting in nature. So, if it is not there, then while cannot join. That's what happened in here. That's what happened in here. Right. So, the time taken is this much. Now, the last three. Achha, look at here. Your priority three. Priority three is over. Ten questions over. In the, in the last one, you were at 15 or 16 out of 22. Now, you could have got seven out of ten correct in these. Hai na? So, if you have got seven out of ten correct, 22 to 23 out of 32. So, you are already done with 32 question. 32 minutes 33 seconds plus 5 minutes plus 5 minutes of strategy building plus 5 minutes of strategy building. So, you are at 30 around 38 minutes here, you are at 33 minutes here and you are at 28 minutes here, hai na? right? You are at 28 minutes here. So, in 38 minutes, the low speed guy is already at the ending stages of his paper, but he has also scored an around 22-23. If he's a high speed guy, he uh, sorry, high accuracy guy, he would have scored a 25 or a 26 out, out of this 32. Right? Or maybe more. Hai na? So, so it is, you're, you're already at a score which would have fetched you a score which is more than 19, had been more than 99.8 percentile in this section. Imagine. And, and the medium speed guys and the high speed guys have not even completed their time limit. Let's look at the last three questions. Question number 121. One minute. Okay, done. See, this is the answer is A. 
because the other ones were not just getting in people put themselves through academic study despite not being suited to it gain very little so people who put themselves through academic studies and are not suited to it gain very little so but b is talking something opposite he say they say everyone gains c is also talking about something opposite many people are putting to university despite not, you know it's it's very specific it's very specific just like the specific case so uh, c is eliminated b is eliminated a is the thing that is talking about it so only a see the low speed guy will not be able to do it because his time is already up i told you know the last 2 minutes you will not be able to do anything so he is already at 38 minutes so i have assumed that he is done with next uh the next one the answer is a again the you know it's it's very clear the, the question is just the opposite of the last question hai na here the passage has been given you'll have to see the central idea right here a only one fits in because the uh, uh, this is out of context and uh, this is not given so both are eliminated this was easy this is something that you could have scored very easily as a matter of fact the last two questions 121 and 122 or the first two question rather but in our order the last two question were very easy and you could have scored it if you had given this one minute time now the last question now this was a little tricky take one minute which does not fit into context so the option a 2 and 3 does not fit into the context if you read it through these are odd one out 2 is odd one out 3 is odd one out. the 3 uh, and 4 sentences are highlighted in bold choose the option that the correct combination of sentences that are contextually incorrect so these are the two which are incorrect in nature because you know it's not coming into the flow logical decision creative uh, or justify time concerns does not come in the flow of this in right okay so you know time has, is is not being used in here it is a, a single strategy strategy has been talked about which goes on with this right uh, right way strategy goes on with this but here time is an extra variable so this guys they are odd one out this is tricky this you might not have got also but at any case two out of three the first three should have uh, first two should have been correct so then you could have got a 24 or 25 out of 35 correct correct 34 24 or 35 out of which two or three would be the uh, more than one marks question so you would have got easily a 27 to 28 in this even if you are not the high accuracy guy you would have got a 27 28 in this which would have made you scale skies in this right so let's first list the final score so what is your final score final new score is your old score plus the scores that you have got correct in reattempt and then the careless mistakes right the careless mistakes add them also this what's your final score your final score is your potential is your capability that's what you are worth and this is what you should target in similar kind of difficulty level right so let me let me come on the screen for this before i move on to the takeaways see this is how it was possible 27 28 was so easily possible you know 23 24 was so easily possible even with some extra mistake i'll show you i'll show you how the high speed guy would have scored how the low speed and the medium speed would guy uh, guy would have scored but see with this kind of score you would be in the top in this particular test in this kind of difficulty level of test and this particular test you would have been in the 0.2 percentile top 100 of the country in this test not in sbip mains but in this test in the takers not bad right very good right so, so this was gettable this was doable and what is the difference that we made see it, even uh, we were at 33 the high speed guy was at 33 minute the medium speed guy had, was at 37 minute adding up the 5 minutes of the strategy only the low speed guy was pressed on time and could not do two questions or three questions still 
everyone you know if if you order the paper if you prioritize the paper everyone completes the paper goes through all the major questions and is able to give his best and get his best score give his best and get his best score if his capability is low speed he cannot get a score of 30 but if his capability is high speed he will get a 30 if his capability is low speed he will not go, get beyond 20 in such kind of paper that's what strategy does to you that's how if you plan your paper that's what it does to you right okay so let's see what what are the takeaways you see these were the type of questions now the low speed guy took the full time the medium speed guy 35 minutes and the high speed guy 30 minutes we saved time and 40 minutes was the time that you had you had so what are the attempts let's say the low speed guy attempted between 25 to 30 because all of the questions you will not attempt na? you you went through the low speed guy went through 32 questions but you will attempt around you know uh, 80 percent of it so 26 attempts so 25 to 30 attempts uh, medium speed guy 30 to 32 uh, because he has gone through all the 35 questions and 80 percent of it so 20 uh, you know 30 is around what you 80 to 90 percent 30 to 32 the high speed guy would have uh, 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 okay 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry i am i am uh, talking about the attempts here but whereas i have uh, written the scores here so attempts of score attempts of score in terms of score not in terms of questions in terms of score low speed guy i would have attempted 25 to 30 easily in medium speed guy 30 to 32 you would have attempted 28 question but 30 to 32 30 to 32 kind of score uh, attempts and 35 to 37 out of 40 so and based on this let's say there is exam pressure hai na? Uh, and de therefore normally in a, in a such a condition you will get 9 10 percent wrong but in exam uh, pressure you get 80 percent uh, 20 percent wrong 80 percent accuracy so even then a low low speed low uh, low speed guy would get 22 percent uh, 22 to 20 to 22 so even with an exam pressure i told you now you will not score below 20 this in this mock you shouldn't have scored below 20 medium speed 28 normally 25 in exam pressure high speed 33 scored normally out of 35 to 37 score attempt and 30 in exams pressure that's what was possible for people who are good at english so people who are good at english you should score this you should make your competitor sweat even if you are not very good at English, you should at least do this, right? And what did this does to your overall paper? Let's say in this section, a good score, a good score is 25, you know, and at 25, you would have scored more than 99.5 percentile very easily, very easily. At 30, you would have scored more than 99.98 percentile or 9 percentile, very easily, that is. Overall, I saw at 100 it is 99.9 percentile or 88 percentile. So you are in the top, let's say 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 percentile. So a score of 25 in one section, there are four sections, excluding descriptive, four sections. So you know within these four sections, if you get 25 in uh, in English, which is of only 40 marks, then in the rest which is of what you know 45 plus 35 80 80 plus 60 140 no 160 sorry 160 so out, out of that 160 marks you uh, you would get you you can get at least another 80 uh, 75 na? that's possible so what this a, a high score in english would do it will pull up your whole score as a matter of fact, what you should try to is to maximize your score in each one of these sectional, each one of these sections. So that when you get your highest possible score in each one of these sections, you go beyond 110, 120. And that would be a competitive score. That would be a score that would bowl over anyone. Right. Okay. So you know, try to find out the in a, in a similar difficulty level paper always remember always remember the all discussions are to be taken in the disclaimer this is a disclaimer from my side 
all the discussions are to be taken on the context that this paper is of similar difficulty level difficulty level changes strategy changes number of attempts uh, uh, possible number of attempts possible number of correct changes everything changes hai na right okay so in the, in a the similar difficulty level paper so the as good score in english would push your overall score too as a matter of fact you should try and score in every section your best score and the score that would come would be the most competitive score that you would be with got it right okay so what was the agenda of this analysis i told you at the start so that in the next mock we we can improve and our score can be replicated that score can be replicated in the mains a score of 30 can be replicated in mains 30 you know figuratively again in the context of this kind of paper what would we do for that we discuss strategy techniques and methods to increase your score right we discussed the silly careless errors that we commit we discussed how to improve score keeping in mind our weaknesses and strength so in those areas where you have made careless uh, conceptual mistakes just go and very fast revise those concepts right so that that would help you there we in short we showed you what you are capable of moreover moreover what we are we have discussed here is also the way you should analyze every mock remember only taking mock is not important analyzing that mock analysis of one mock takes as much time the mock takes so if you are taking a mock for 2 minutes hey, sorry 2 hours it would take 2 to 3 hours to analyze too so take one mock analyze it take one mock analyze it so if you are taking one mock a day you are analyzing also one mock a day complete analysis this way and what would the analysis be let me show you the analysis would be like this first what will do you will take the test or take the mock you will get the score you will score then you will uh, attempt the unattempted ones and the wrong ones the wrong and unattempted ones you will attempt them reattempt them retake it and then you will check how many correct that would go on simultaneously checking uh, how many correct would go on simultaneously how many correct and their solution this is going on simultaneously and then you will see what is your new score because this new score is your capability this is your capability this is what we could have got this uh, in this paper if you had planned it well right okay theek okay? hai so and this is in short this is what you are capable of i told you right but now it's up to you whether you will be able to do it or not it's entirely up to you you will need to do it the you know use this lecture well and the subsequent lectures on quant and reasoning well and improve on your score these lectures are directed towards those students you know who who want who are who are hungry for success who are who are there who are just there and they just need to make their mark in the mains exam right so if you are one of those be be sincere with these lectures with the suggestions that we have given in these lectures if you have doubt in any one of these questions or in general strategy uh, put it there in the comment section of this lecture of this video uh, or you can also you know uh, communicate with us in the uh, you know if there are any general queries you can communicate with us in our uh, facebook at our facebook group right so that would be all for today we we'll log off today thank you very much all the best